company is built on an expertise in materials engineering that uh, we really use throughout all of our divisions. We're into so many more things than just metals. We're into ceramics, you know, we're into some polymers. We're into a, a much wider variety of things than just metals. The new lab really has unmatched capability uh, uh, across the spectrum of uh, materials analysis. Uh, we've been told uh, by a number of people that we've brought through that, you know, they haven't seen this collection of equipment, this capability in one lab ever. So we're really proud of it. It's a, it's a, a unique collection of the latest high-tech equipment for doing materials analysis and materials research that I think you can get anywhere. One of the highlights of our microscopy lab is our Zeiss MA10 scanning electron microscope, also known as a SEM. And what this is capable of doing, this allows us to look at things that we can't see with the naked eye or with a standard white light microscope. This allows us to go up to magnifications as high as 100,000 X in order to look at a fracture surface or look at a component and really observe what the microscopic features are or characteristics are within that material. We also use this microscope to characterize uh, any new coatings that we're developing or identifying any unknown particles that might be existing that might be leading to a failure or that might be actually benefiting from our new coating technology. Another very useful piece of equipment we have for performing failure analysis is a STEMI stereo microscope produced by Zeiss. And what this allows us to do, if we received a component that comes in from the field that's failed, if we just want to get a nice look, doesn't have to be very, very high magnification, but if we just want to put it underneath the microscope, get an idea on where the failure origin might have initiated, or if there's any other features on the component, such as uh, stress indication lines or deep grooves that might be in the surface, this microscope allows us to identify what those are before we decide to take it to the next level and go into SEM analysis. Another very important part of metallurgical analysis is the analysis that we do on microstructures. And in order to do this, we use a Zeiss Axiovert 40 microscope that's used to look at mounted and polished specimens. And what we can do in our mechanical testing room is we can actually prepare specimens to a mere finish we can etch them and then we can look at the revealing microstructure underneath our uh, inverted metallograph microscope that we have. And once we are analyzing this microstructure under the, under the scope, we can also identify what, what is the thickness of the coating, what is the average carbide percentage or porosity percentage that might be in our, within our coating. Uh, and we can also identify if there's any unusual phases that might be existing in the microstructure. Another very unique piece of equipment we have in our microscopy room is our Keyence VK9700 3D laser scanning microscope. And what this microscope can do that our SEM can't do, that our Exuvert uh, 40 metallograph can't do, what our stereo microscope can't do is this microscope can basically characterize the surface topography of a worn surface from the field. And what this can do is it can basically identify the low points of the surface, the high points of the surface, and it can basically build up a 3D model that characterizes what the surface of our engineered solution looks like. And we can get a lot of really great feedback from this on parts that come back from the field. We can section through and identify how the carbides are wearing or how uh, certain field conditions might be affecting either the abrasion or the erosion on the surface of a sample. So it's a really great way to quantify surface topography and surface characteristics of a material or coating that we can't see with our scanning electron microscope or other microscopes that are in a microscopy room. A very important material property is the hardness of a material and typically the standard method of, use, of testing hardness is with a Rockwell C hardness tester and this is a, this is a macro hardness tester. And there are cases where we have some engineered coatings that have multiple phases uh, within the coating. And if you were to test this coating with a macro hardness tester, you'd be covering all of these phases and you'd kind of get an average of what that hardness is. 
but some of these phases are very uh, they're very characteristic of how that coating is going to perform in the field. Some of these phases provide the extreme abrasion resistance for the component and then some of these phases also provide the ductility that the component might need so the coating doesn't chip off. So what we have is we have a Clemex automatic micro hardness tester that can go in and identify these different phases that make up our coating. So this could be our carbide materials that provide the, the extreme abrasion resistance or it could be the matrix material that we use in between to ensure that that coating doesn't chip off in the field. Within the Fisher Barton Technology Center, we have multiple different methods of testing the chemical composition of our different materials that we're, that we're using on our products. One of these being our LECO 850 Glow Discharge Spectrometer. And what this spectrometer is capable of is testing the chemical composition on low alloy steels, tool steels, stainless steels, and also testing our nickel and tungsten carbide coatings. So what this allows us to do is we can take a small section out of any one of our components or out of a competitor component, and we can mount this within our machine, and in about five minutes, this will give us a full chemical composition of that material. This will tell us if it's the correct grade, this will tell us if the competitor is using a different grade of material. And another very key feature on this equipment is we have ability to characterize chemical composition at different depths. So we have a quantitative depth profiling method that can characterize the first 100 microns of a sample surface. X-ray fluorescence, also known as XRF, is also a very important method used to characterize the bulk chemical composition of components. We can use our thermoscientific ARL 9900 to perform this analysis, and we can perform this on, on steels, on carbide materials, on salts. And what we can do is we can prepare a sample that's a, in powder form or in solid form we can put this into our machine and we can run XRF analysis on this and this will tell us what elements are present within our material. And this will allow us to optimize our materials selection and processing techniques to produce components that last longer and perform better. While our spectrometer is a great method for identifying the chemical composition of our different materials that we use. We also have a LECO nitrogen analyzer and a LECO carbon detector for analyzing these very important small elements that exist within our materials. Our spectrometer doesn't have the capability of getting down to the precision on these certain elements. So these two tools are used for identifying with very high precision what the amount of carbon is within a material or what our nitrogen is, is within our material. Uh, there are cases where uh, nitrogen contamination can lead to a dramatic failure in the field if our steels are, you know, contain this high level of nitrogen. Uh, another important part of our, in our carbide coatings and within our steel is what is the carbon percentage? The carbon is the major element that leads to uh, providing the hardness and the strength and the abrasion resistance that our products are going to contain. So this is a great method for identifying with high accuracy and high precision what the percentage of carbon and nitrogen are within our materials. Within the field, a lot of our products are exposed to very, very high levels of impact. And within the research and development laboratory, we're able to perform instrumented drop weight impact tests with our Instron drop weight impact tester. And what we can do with, with this is we can basically take a flat sample surface or a beveled surface, and we can use an instrumented drop weight test to come down and basically apply a force to our sample, and it will rebound back, and based on the, uh, the data that it collects from the load cell, it'll plot out the load over time that was being applied to our specimen during that impact, and we can use this data to characterize how our how our materials performing during this impact situation. In order to characterize the mechanical properties of our materials, 
and of our components, we use our MTS 322 Universal Testing Machine. And what this machine is capable of is performing uh, basic tensile tests. We can take a dog bone specimen and we can do a standardized tensile test that will tell us our yield strength, ultimate tensile strength and elongation, which are pretty common material properties as it relates to mechanical uh, testing. But we also have the ability to perform instrumented fatigue tests on our components. So we can take one of our lawnmower blades, we can take another uh, welded component, and we can grab onto a part of that component, and we can cycle this up and down at whatever we desire, uh, whatever fits the application within the field. And we can perform all of these instrumented fatigue tests and tensile tests uh, within our laboratory with this machine. The data we obtain from fatigue testing is very valuable to us because we can ensure that the components that we're producing are going to have long-lasting fatigue life. And this test that we can perform within our lab, we can put millions of cycles on a lawnmower blade in a matter of a day. And this reduces a lot of the time it takes to send components out into the field. And this will give us a very good indication uh, when it relates to fatigue life on our components before they leave Fisher Barton. On a lot of our products, we see multiple different types of wear mechanisms that might take place in the field. And two of those are abrasion and erosion. Typically with abrasion, we, we like to think of that as having two different surfaces that are rubbing aggressively against each other. And for that, we use our ASTM G65 dry sand rubber wheel abrasion wear tester. But we also have a ASTM G76 erosion tester. And what this does, this looks at the erosion wear on a surface. So this could be uh, very, very fine particles that are basically flying through the air that are impinging and hitting the surface and very slowly wearing away the coating or wearing, wearing away the surface. Uh, there's times where we're, we might be looking at a coating and we have these very small carbide particles that are protruding from the coating. Uh, in certain erosion applications, we might see very small erosion media that's wearing away in between the certain carbide particles, wearing away the matrix of the coating. So within our R&D efforts, we like to, we're focusing on designing uh, new coatings, new technologies that's gonna help prevent this erosive wear application that we might see on a lot of our components in the field. A key characteristic to any material is the hardness of the material. And what we do is we have a Struer's DuraJet hardness tester that tests multiple different hardness scales. We can test the Rockwell C hardness, which is typical for testing a heat treated steel. We can test the Rockwell B hardness, which is typical for uh, as received incoming steel that has yet to be heat treated. And we can also test the Rockwell A hardness, which is typical for testing carbide materials. It's a very standard piece of equipment within our laboratory, but it's also a very critical piece of equipment to ensure that our products have the correct hardness before going out into the field. A necessary component of materials testing is sample preparation. And within our laboratory, we have a sample preparation area that has an automatic cutoff saw, an automatic mounting press, and an automatic polisher for producing uniform and consistent samples each and every time. 